Well, I'm joined by uh, Jamil Ahmed. He's from uh, FXTM. He's our international visitor who pops in every so often. Thanks for joining us, uh, Jamil. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Great stuff. So markets are looking a bit more positive today relative to yesterday, but presumably those concerns around U.S. Treasuries, higher U.S. Treasuries, you know, remain. Absolutely. So we've seen a bit of a recovery in the sentiment during trading today, but let's not forget the past couple of days have been quite negative on the stock markets. And we have a very unpredictable news flow where investors don't quite know where to look for indications of when market could be turning next. So we've got concerns over the higher Treasury yields in the United States, what this could do for Federal Reserve interest rate expectations. There's also concerns about the unpredictable nature of U.S. political policy with the Donald Trump administration. There's concerns over U.S. relations with Iran, U.S. relations with China, with uh, the trade narrative. We have relations with the US and Russia. And we still have quite a bit of that geopolitical risk premium that investors are monitoring, even if it's not such a severe concern in the market. So certainly for our viewers, there's a lot to keep on top of and a lot of news flow that we must monitor. But how do US Treasury yields suddenly spike? Obviously, there's something going on. Um, why do they spike? And obviously, it's not the doing of the US Federal Reserve. It's something that's happening within the market. It's a very good question, actually. And I'm even wondering whether this move in Treasury yields could be a psychological move or whether it really is a technical indicator that the US dollar should be moving much higher and that the Federal Reserve need to move higher with US interest rate expectations. Uh, it's a good question, if I'm being honest with you, that one. What I do believe is that the market's recovering. Um, the market is seeing more expectations that the Federal Reserve will be raising US interest rates, so they're pricing in some more yield into the US dollar. And I think what the US Treasury yields and the Federal Reserve offer in terms of central bank expectations, that the developed markets like the Bank of England, the European Central Bank and the Bank of Japan are not quite ready to offer is consistency with central bank policy. Um, we've got the Bank of England who are being, sending a lot of mixed messages over interest rate expectations. That's causing a lot of volatility in the British pound. But when it comes to U.S. Federal Reserve, uh, monetary guidance, they're very consistent with their tone. They want to raise U.S. interest rates even higher. And this could possibly be the psychological factor that's pushing investors towards the dollar and also encouraging this move in the Treasury yields. And still on monetary policy, the European Central Bank is making a call on monetary policy today. People are talking about the European economy slowing, but of course we know that it's, you know, it's taken a long time for it to begin to grow. Um, but what's your expectation? Do you think that the ECB will go down the road of clawing back that stimulus? Exactly. This is what I believe, that there's no reason to be severely concerned that the European economy is now entering another downturn. Let's not forget 2017 was the year of outperformance for the EU economy and also for the euro. So it's possible that 2018 we're just noticing a little bit of slowdown in growth, but we're still seeing growth, which is very positive. Mm. When it comes to the ECB and their policy message, of course, euro buyers want to see more guidance from the European Central Bank that they are at least considering raising interest rates at some point soon. It probably will not be that soon, and we're probably going to see EU interest rates move higher towards the end of the current decade. But this is what buyers and investors want to see, some sort of guidance from the European Central Bank that eventually they will follow the path of the US Federal Reserve and will look to increase interest rates higher, which would be positive for the euro. And then specifically on South Africa, there's been a very positive narrative since you last came here last year. Um, we've seen the RAND firm quite substantially, although it's weakening a bit now. Um, positive um, policy moves by our president seeking to raise $100 billion over the next five years to inject uh, capital investment in the country and so on and so forth. Positive narrative, but from your perspective as someone who looks at things internationally, what are people saying about the prospect of investment in South Africa and do you think the fundamentals of the country are looking better? There's certainly grown optimism here. Um, you can see this, even this is my third visit to South Africa over the past one year and I can see a lot more optimism on the ground. Economic data is picking up. So there's room to be fundamentally positive on the economy and the market, which is positive for the South African rand. We saw that huge rally in the currency over the first quarter of 2018. That shows positive sentiment. But when it comes to emerging markets and emerging market currencies, you have to remember that the global markets can have a huge impact on how the local performance of the market. So these um, headlines between Trump and the unpredictable nature of US president 
U.S. administrative policy can also have a big impact on risk appetite. And if there's lack of risk appetite in the market, there's less appeal towards the stock markets. We saw that over the past couple of days, which means there's less appeal towards risky assets such as the emerging markets. South Africa is one of those. And of course, that can impact the South African rand as well. So I would say that the market's definitely more positive. There's room to be upbeat on the local economy. However, we cannot overlook those global factors that at any given moment can change the market. Indeed. Well, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your insights, as always, uh, Jamil. Uh, that was uh, Jamil Ahmed. He's uh, from FXTM. After a short break, Nzinga with more business news for you.